uh, what makes BTS special uh, in your opinion? BTS is they're a phenomenon. I'll be dropping more kind of Easter eggs on the story. Hey, this is Steve Aoki giving a shout out to Megcon ID. Hope all's well. Hi, Steve. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing, Steve? Good. I'm doing great. Okay. Where are you now? I'm in Vegas. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, for some concert or gigs? I live here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shindu from Medcom.id from Indonesia. Okay. And uh, you know you have a biggest crowd in here, biggest fam- fans in in Indonesia, right? <laughs> Amazing, thank you. Okay, um, let's start the interview, Steve. Okay, okay. In your latest album, you've collaborated with music icons of early 2000s like Akon and Paris Hilton. What's the story behind that? Um, I love working with old friends. I mean, Akon and Paris are old friends of mine. I've known Akon for like 15 years. I've known Paris for 20 years. Um, and. And with Akon, it's like when I when I reached out to him to work together on this, I was like, yo, I want to cover one of your classics, but not your dance classics, you know, because he has like some dance classics he did with David Guetta uh, that were like iconic to EDM. I was like, let's cover something that's like different. That's like, but it's, a, it's one of your big hits. And Locked Up just sounded so good on a house beat. So he loved it. He re-sang it and that was perfect. With Paris, this, this track that I was working on, Her, the, the songwriter sound, like, sounded just like Paris, so I sent it to her. I was like, what do you think? And she loved it. She she sang and she killed it and delivered an incredible job. And uh, and then we shot like a nostalgic music video. And like nostalgia is really coming back strong. So um, I think this album is representative of that with Kids, my song I did, um, where it's, it's like, it's taking the MGMT melody from the 2000s and obviously locked up and shooting the music video for Paris, uh, I mean, for Lighter, you know, just just like kind of bringing it to that level. Okay, uh, what do you think? Are they still relevant to the music industry right now in, in this era? Wh- which ones? Ekan and Paris. Um, yeah, I think it's not, not about like if they're relevant right now. I think it's more about they've their fixtures in the music space. Like okay. Paris is, she's like, it's not about like, you know, I don't think about her like that. I think about her more like, She's a fixture of culture, you know. Okay. Um, and she like it's like she's done so much in the culture, and she's a DJ. She's a good friend of mine. Um, that's a that's like that to me is more like uh, subjective, right? Because every everyone has a subjective kind of opinion whether someone's relevant now or before or in the future. Um, Akon is a legend. Yes. You know, yes. and like to me, I like to work with legends, you know. Okay. And honestly, I love working with artists that haven't put anything out okay. in a while. So um, if, especially if like whenever I'm like going through collab lists, I'm like, oh, this artist hasn't really worked with uh, anyone recently. I'm like, boom, I'd rather work with them than working with someone that's like dropping tons and tons of records in, in, the, in the same period of time. I think it's more exciting to, to surprise people. How did you come up with the idea of making an EDM music with the story of hero character's journey? Yeah, I mean, I, I love telling story. I love uh, fantasy. I love sci-fi. Um, I'm, I'm a, like, I love creating worlds and, and building out the world. So I spent a, like, you know, all of 2023 writing this 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 like pretty incredible, fantastic fantastical story of hero uh trying to save the world by by getting these 10 rings and and battling these different worlds of creatures uh you know on the on the search of his of the battle he he loses himself and and uh this new character emerges named hyro and uh it's a 260 page story which is um something that took a long t- time and it took a whole team to put together the art and and all all of the slides and and the cards i mean just the cards alone requires a team um and i'm i'm a big fan of trading card game in general like i i collect pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh, magic the gathering 
I started and co-founded uh, MetaZoo with Mike Waddell. It's another trading card game. So I'm creating uh, HeroQuest as its own IP, intellectual property, uh, its own trading card game, its own world, its own universe. So um, that's a lot of fun to do, and I'm so excited to drop this bundle that introduces the very first trading card game of HeroQuest, this first set, and the first book. So I think this will introduce uh, what we're going to be offering because on top of the music, I'm going to be doing really cool trading card game drops with Hero Quest. I'll be dropping more kind of Easter eggs on the story. I'm going to combine, you know, uh, Easter eggs at my shows where people can get cards, digital cards, physical cards, um, just to make it more fun. Okay. It's going to be to movie or film maybe in the next future? Yeah, I mean, that's the goal, you know? I think okay. that's the goal because I spent, I mean, so much time building this really fun story. And the comic, I mean, the graphic novel, which is dropping early next year, uh, pre-order is live for till November 30th. So it's, it's still live, you know? Um, I, I, I just, I, I can't wait till, you know, we develop it further. And, and the end goal is, uh, you know, an anime, a movie, um, and build that story out on TV. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you have been to Indonesia for several times, and I just want to know about what's the most memorable thing about Indonesia. Um, I mean, I love, I love, I love uh, Jakarta. Okay. Yeah, I love Bali. Um, I love um, Bandung. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I I just love I love Indonesia because the my fans there go like we go crazy. Yeah. I have like really intense, very passionate fans in Indonesia, and some of some of my biggest fans are from Indonesia. You know, okay. so I like like you know very devoted fan base there. So, you know, yeah. I've been going there since 2006. You know, like and it like I go at least once a year or once every other year to Indonesia. How about the food? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, nasi goreng. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Have you tried you know, uh, uh, beef rendang or something like that? Uh, spicy or spicy food? No, I don't. I don't really eat uh, beef. So, okay. oh, okay. yeah. But I do like. I do like your your chicken skewers. Oh. I like you know. I like all the all the uh, spices and you know the rice and the eggs and stuff. So. Okay. Are you interested to collaborating with Indonesian musician or producer maybe in the next future? Yeah, I think I think I'd love I'd love to do that. You know, like I worked with uh, um, Anger Dimas for okay uh, a few years. We made yeah, many songs together. So um, you know, like 2011, we made Beatdown. You know, I was like, it's, I mean, he's an old friend of mine. So I, I, you know, maybe I'll work again with with him. I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely open to work with a lot of different artists there. Okay, maybe explore about Indonesian ethics, uh, sounds. You know, we have so many traditional instruments. Right. Uh, you studied uh, about sociology, right? In in, in the yes. college. Yeah. Now, uh, does that subject influence you when you making music or visiting a country? Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you know. It's all kind of subconscious now. It's like part of my process, how I see things. I'm very interested in um, why people do what they do. You know, it's, it's a that's a question of a sociologist likes to do research on. You know, like why do why do groups do this particular thing? Why you know, I love that question. Yeah. So, you know, like it's like and, and as a DJ, I'm navigating a group of people and I and I want them to work with me and vibe with me and roll with me and great DJs can do a really good job of that you know so I mean that's something that I've been trying to train myself to be better and better at okay uh, this is my last question uh, you know uh, one of your most iconic collaboration is with BTS I just want to know what's your perspective uh, and uh, what makes BTS special if, uh, in your opinion? BTS is, they're a phenomena that hasn't been repeated before. I call it the Bruce Lee effect. Wow. It's like, you know, like Bruce Lee is a phenomena. As we all know, 
He's a the probably most famous Asian in the history of the world, yeah. right? I mean, besides like, you know, like you go far, far, far back in time, but you know, the kind of influence that Bruce Lee had was was phenomenal. And then 50 years later comes BTS. You know that this really has this incredible impact around the world through their music, and they happen to be Koreans. They happen to be Asians. So it has a, such a powerful, positive effect to all Asian people. So I think you know beyond their music, beyond their charisma, their personality, is the amount of cultural impact that they've they've had on the the, the the cultural positive impact they've made on on all Asian people. Is there any plan to collaborate again with them? Uh, you know, you never know. We don't have okay. any plans right now, but you never know. I love them so much. They know that. I, uh, you know, they're very, very deep, like very deep in my heart. So, I'd love to do it, work with them again. You know, there, but they have military. They have uh, other yeah. things going on. So, okay, Steve, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh,